Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So this is part one of the review of the Racer Star Tattoo F4S. Um, so I took it out today flying and actually forgot my pro propellers at home and I just had one set and I had one bent prop. So the whole time I just had oscillations going through because it was obviously I had a bent prop. However, I managed to just go around it and just fly it and just enjoy it. And I got to enjoy it right before the rain came in. So I probably possibly put around eight, maybe nine lipos in it. So it was very good. Um, now, a couple things to know. Now, let's just talk about noise. That's why I'm making this video right now. Later on, we'll talk about this whole thing once I properly go take it out for Maiden. Um, thus, having these oscillations, you know, when you have these, you know, bent propeller oscillations, uh, it does produce noise and it can generate noise. However, you know, in the FPV footage, you will see some noise, but in my book, I consider it no noise. Um, I would not try to modify it to make it even better. For me, it's absolutely perfect, and I'm going to show you that right now. So, I mean, just looking at it, um, I don't consider that noise. I mean, look, it's just so beautiful. It's, nothing is touching the OSD, which is just awesome. Uh, that's the main thing I look for because cleaning out the OSD uh, flickers and noise, and that's just a pain. And um, it, it, it really does ruin the experience, in my opinion. Some people don't care, but I really don't like seeing that. So, overall... In, pers in terms of noise, it's doing very well, absolutely. It's just gorgeous, really. Because all we did was just add low ESR capacitor. We didn't even need a voltage regulator or an LC filter. So I'm very happy with that. And we do have some high, nice, demanding motors here. These are the F40 version 3. They're 2305. So it's a pretty mean setup here. Now, in terms of firmware and software on this guy... Now, I have not tried to connect Betaflight 32-bit yet. However, I also noted something. Um, when I went to go flash it, the firmware version for this is running something like VR. I don't even remember. But we're going to come back on the second part of the review and check it out. Uh, it was running 3.1.7. or Yeah, 3.1.7. Yeah, and um, you, there was no, for that specific firmware, there was no 3.2 or anything above that, actually. So I just left it there, and in the in configuration, I, I set it just to DSHOT 600. Um, I didn't want to bother. I just wanted to take it out flight and just see just quickly how it flies, if it has any problems, if it's working or if it's not working. Now, luckily for me also, I did not have to go into beta flight to actually go through it just yet, but we're going to do that together. Uh, because when I booted it, all the motors were spinning in the right direction. I was actually very happy. That's one of the first times that it happened, so that was pretty sweet. Um, now, I... Uh, you know, so far, all I can say is I'm currently loving it. You know, it's just such an expensive setup. I'm actually not thinking of replacing it because I am enjoying it. However, the drawbacks, the cons of this would be the firmware thing. But we're going to be playing around with the firmware thing because I heard, well, I saw in a comment, uh, I forgot his name and I do apologize, on the just the overview of the board saying that there's another firmware we could use where it gives us 3.2. So we'll be all doing that together on the part two of the review to see if we can actually do that. Um, I have not tried to connect BL Heli 32. So obviously we won't be able to because 3.1.7 does not have the pass through. I believe just 3.2 has the pass through for the BL Heli 32. And this is supposed to be a BL Heli 32 or 32 bit ESC. So that's something to note there as well. Um, and the gyro is the MPU 6000. It's beautiful. Um, it handled the vibrations and oscillations from that bent propeller. Absolutely gorgeous. So it flies good. But in terms of software, it's lacking. So you can kind of call it the diatone of flight controllers because on the diatone, you can't update your firmware or you'll just ruin it. It won't even work anymore. And I've had that experience before getting the new diatone with their flight controllers when I was using them. So it's kind of in the same area, but this has, this has hope. Let's just say that. So we're going to come back and revisit this and then go through it together and see what we can make it do, uh, if we can make it work or not. So that will be pretty sweet. And... Well, that's all I could really say right now. So I'm just going to leave you guys with the flight footage of this quad. The Maiden will come up later. This You can consider this a Maiden, but it has very bad oscillations uh, because of the bent propeller. And um, it was very good. It flew very beautiful. Um, I took it nice and easy, and I uh, took a different approach to flying it. All right, guys. I really hope it helped someone out there. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And we will be taking this back on the bench and actually going through the beta flight stuff together, trying to get the firmware to... Um, 
update, but even even if it doesn't, I'm very satisfied with it. I love it, and I really don't care. Um, so I'll, I'm just gonna keep it until it burns, even if I can't change anything in the modif in the in the software and firmware or anything in here. So for me, it was a winner so far. Um, not a hundred percent winner, but I'm I'm pleased with it. I, I don't need D shot one thousand two hundred. Um, so yeah, so that's gonna conclude it, guys. And um, if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And if you've used it, give us your personal experience. I would love to hear it, and I'm sure everyone else would. And yeah, so I'm gonna leave you guys with the FPV footage, and I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.